Well, good morning, everybody. If it's your first time here, glad to have you tuning into the Hurricane Creek Farms channel. Um, if you're coming back, then welcome back. Glad you're here. Um, again, for those first time viewers, as always, we love a thumbs up on the video. We'd be more than happy if you subscribed as well. But as usual, we've got a lot of things to get done today. It's Saturday, it's kind of rainy. Rained a little earlier, a little sprinkle. I think the rain might be about over. It wasn't supposed to rain much, but I don't think we're going to see the sun today. But probably the biggest thing we're going to do is probably early this afternoon process the first of those stalker calves that we bought last week or, or earlier this week. Get that done. Got a few more odds and ends chores. We're going to run to the feed store, get, get some mineral, getting ready for uh, grazing really to begin. But anyway, let's dive right into it. afternoon which get a little further that truck's a little loud um, which basically what does that mean what does working calf mean process calf so we're gonna vaccinate them uh, deworm them castrate the bulls we'll, we'll band those bulls um, again go through all that in more detail later on uh, ear notch them for BVD testing um, put a, an ID tag just a number tag in their ear as well I think, I think that's really everything we're doing to them uh, but go ahead and go drop them some feed off this morning. They're used to getting fed kind of first night. Then uh, we're going to run to the feed store real quick, get some high mag mineral. Um, some of you may or may not be aware that you know, in the spring, when all of a sudden we have these lush grasses available, um, cattle can experience a problem known as grass tetany. We combat that or prevent that by um, adjusting their mineral, um, feeding a high magnesium mineral this time of year. But go ahead and get a little of that. Um, a little frustrating. If you've watched the channel much, you've heard me complain about you know, the farm stores, the ag retailers around here don't really cater to cattlemen at all. And another good example, they don't have very much of the mineral we want. Actually, they don't have the exact one I want at all. They do have a, a comparable one, but not even, I, I was wanting to get a full ton today, go ahead and just get a full pallet. But they don't have it, so. All right, so I made it back from the feed store, got our mineral. They didn't really have the one we wanted. So we ended up just getting a half ton. We wanted to get a, a full ton of mineral, but got that. Got some shavings for the horse stalls, a little bit of horse feed, a little bit of cat food for the barn cats. Don't want to forget about them. But now let's get her unloaded. Now, I don't always use magic tricks, but when I do, it's usually in order to make my life a little easier. All right, so we've just gotten here and work on these stalkers. Looks like the sun may make a brief appearance this afternoon. I got one helper right there got a couple more on the way but the shoot been sitting out in the weather uh oh that that might not do us much good all right so that can was pretty much worthless so mental note another can of wd-40 before we work a bigger group but you can see they're all right over there actually all all but that one already in the smaller pen there we're gonna run a little feed we'll dump in there get them caught um, start getting vaccines and all drawn up we'll go through the different vaccines we're going to use and whatnot and kind of explain that all right so we'll go through a few of the specifics of what we're about to do so on the vaccines first we're gonna hit them with three vaccines um, for this year for the first time we are going to use uh, manheimia and pasturella vaccine um, covexin 8 is our clostridial um, black leg you hear a lot of people call it we do like Covexin specifically because of the tetanus when we are castrating or banding. And then our respiratory, um, a modified live, we're using Bovis Shield Gold that includes the uh, rhinotracheitis, tracheitis, um, BVD, the bovine virus diarrhea, um, PI3 or parainfluenza 3, and BRSV, the bovine respiratory syncytial virus. Dewormer, we like long range. I um, believe you get maybe as many as 150 days for some parasites, but, um, 110 
you know, for long-term control. We are giving them a dose of an antibiotic, um, Zactran. These cattle do not appear to be sick. They are what we consider to be higher, at least moderate risk. You're just coming through a sale barn. So we use it metaphylactically, which is simply where you're taking a group of animals that are at high risk or high potential for developing infection and treat them. I think that's worthwhile. Um, we do give them a an implant, a growth implant. Um, the, and of course, you know, that may spark controversy with some. And I've actually got a little chart on my phone I'll show you. But the reality is that the amount of estrogen that ends up in the beef is like nothing. Um, let me see if I can show you this chart. So I'm not, I'm not tech savvy enough to put it up just on the computer screen. But you may can see there with my shadow, you have to go all the way down nearly to the bottom. And you see that one pound of, of beef from an implanted calf it's going to have 10 nanograms. You compare that to really anything you eat with soy is just going to have like 90,000 times the amount of estrogen. More help arriving. Um, I think a human male, like an adult male, makes uh, on a daily basis about 100,000 nanograms of estrogen. And so, yeah, and, a, and a woman makes like five million or 50 million like it's just outrageous the you know the difference and so um you know even beef from cattle that have not been treated with hormones have estrogen because it's a naturally occurring hormone so again um stick to science stick to the facts when making decisions about things like that and of course why do we do it you know why not just not do it well that product in particular for stocker steers which is what these are all going to be on grass about 17 percent more efficient at gaining and so you know sustainability you know that's the buzzword of the last decade probably you know the the way we are able to raise beef now and how efficiently and how much less water for instance goes into every pound of beef we produce has been decreased something dramatic like i'm not going to give you a number because i'll, I'll misquote it but dramatically reduced the, the amount of inputs over the last 50 years and so um very very big believer in that kind of thing we're going to ear notch them um, that's an ear notching tool we'll show you all this as we're going through them too that's for the bvd test we'll put an id tag in their ear just for obvious reasons so we want to be able to identify everybody um uh -oh. we're having a meltdown from the three-year-old what, what, what was the issue why, why for the meltdown heaven forbid we find his ball uh, so two soccer balls aren't enough he needs a specific soccer ball and apparently that's not one of them so um, anybody that has a toddler can probably uh you know, knows what we're feeling right now there we go just need one leader there we go there we go follow the leader oh Stay back. Stay back. There we go. Hey, kids, y'all be real quiet and still. Come on, baby. Just go on down there. All right, so give him his dewormer. Using a dosing syringe. It's one of the smaller steers. He's actually one of the better behaved ones as well. So, vaccine all in the repeater syringes. Just makes it nice. It faster. You want to squeeze with that one that's the uh, bova shield so it delivers five emails it's a covexin you want to squeeze two emails two cc's then pastrella manhamia two more this one with calmer calves in the bunch Mommy, button. Good ear notching. Tiny little tissue samples, all they need. Do that test. 
They had done it on, on blood or serum in the past, but uh, now they want tissue. Just for that, we can give us antibiotic shot. All right, so we got our antibiotic drawn up, the Zactran. Same thing with it. Um, all injections in accordance with BQA. Subcutaneously in the neck, just to avoid any injection site damage into the meat. Different repeater syringe that works for the dewormer, the long range. Very nice. Easy to do. Okay. Look at it. I, I call him Skunky, or Skunk Tail. With that, that tail like that. <laughs> Going out the back side. He gets the distinguished, or the, the distinguished. That'll be his identification number for as long as we own him and maybe even thereafter. And now that we have him properly identified, we'll take his ear notch for BBD testing. I just a bunch of tissue out of the ear, drop it in this tube, we'll send it in the state lab here in a few days. And, uh, and that is a serum separator tube, but it's just all I had at the house. So I'll probably put them in different tubes before I send them in. All right, so we're going to give him a Cinevax implant. Again, you give this just at the base of the ear, just under the skin. Easy as that. So we're going to ban this guy, use this system here. I've already got that one loaded, but it has a rationing system where it pulls it tight then you crimp that little um, sleeve where it holds it tight. Essentially cuts off circulation, um, rendering the testicles dead. But then, oh, it may take it a couple of weeks, the, the scrotum will fall away. So you've got both, both testicles south of the band, of course. So, don't want to get just one, obviously. Got them both in there. You got, use this indicator, it tells you when you got enough tension, you got it tight enough. And we do. Use just a tag cutter there. Cut that. And as you may be able to see, I don't know if you can actually see it on the testicles there, but it's got them bound up tight. Um, and they'll be, you, you'll be able to tell the next few days, they'll be a little sore, stiff, not moving super fast. But on these bigger calves, I just feel more comfortable doing that than cutting them. We certainly don't hesitate to cut smaller ones but these average and right at five hundred pounds. Uh -huh. Brittany? You see the one we just worked. It's not like they're in terrible distress. That's the first two done. Alright. Step on up buddy. Step on up. Uh -huh. Automatic head gun. It's actually working as it should be. All right, so something else new to us, um, the vaccine coder, uh, this one's from Cross 5 Caterpillars. First time I've used it, but through, what, five head, it's been nice so far, but keeps the vaccine nice, keeps your needles protected. Um, got separate compartments, you can store other things, but keeps everything cool, keeps your vaccine stored safely, and where it's, again, gonna stay at, at refrigerated temperatures. But I've um, been happy with it so far. Um, it was kind of a Christmas present to myself. Don't worry. Y'all will get some love in a little bit as well. Uh, 
Okay, so you got the last of them run through there. Not, not, not too long tied up in that, just 11 head, but it's keeping everything straight, giving them three vaccines, you know, antibiotic injection, a dewormer injection, a notch in their ear, tagging their ear, putting an implant in their ear, and then try, I didn't even keep a good count. I think maybe it's seven, six or seven of them were bulls, over half. Um, there's a couple of them there. Hold the camera straight. I think the others, last I saw, they were going off that way into the woods. So not not too nervous of a bunch, I don't think. So we put them some more feet out. So if they do wander back up here, you know, to the pen and I think they'll go in there and have a treat. Check on them again in the morning. Hope they're all here. All right, so we got those calves worked yesterday afternoon now. Um, they were actually all pretty eager to come up and, and and back into the pen this morning we brought a little feed down here so took advantage of that made a decision to go ahead and, and catch them i'm gonna load them on the trailer haul them to the other side of the farm just like in the last video we did with uh, the other group of calves get them out of here because the plan is bring in another group of calves tomorrow hopefully a, a good bit bigger group than these and if so in this pasture the only water is in the pen and of course this group would have been outside and we could have made it work but this this would be a little easier given if they cooperated this morning we're going to do that and then we brought along ace because we're going to ride and check pretty much all the fences on this place um, check some of them everywhere with their animals right now but um, still some fences we hadn't checked need to go ahead and get that done while we've got a, a little bit of time to do it today and, and you know a nice day but anyway we'll get them loaded there we go, there we go. One at a time, there we go, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Easy does it, easy does it. There we go, got some smart ones in the front. Everything's working out. All right, it's got the caves, got Ace loaded back up. I'm jumping the truck, Sadie's loaded up as well. Yep, she's in there. So I'll make the short, drive about a mile up the road get them unloaded get on him and check some fences and uh then, yeah it's about 11 o'clock may make it home in time for a late lunch all right so getting these boys unloaded when you come on out of there there's our other bunch of calves leave them in here together um so I guess will put us at 26 in this bunch. Um, and ideally we would have kept those calves that we just bought, that we just hauled, isolated from these others for a little longer. I guess we've had them five or six days now, but we just don't, you know, logistically, we were needing to, to make room for another new set. So it's not a perfect scenario, but thankfully got one has got a little bit of a runny nose, nothing major. Um, nobody really acting like there's any significant illness issues. Um, of course, we vaccinated those calves yesterday. Our older calves um, have all been vaccinated twice already. So um, some of them three times. So they're as protected as they can be. It's not a perfect scenario, but we're gonna make it work. But get on ace there and go check the fences on, on the rest of this farm, which you can see Sadie over there out in the new pasture. Um, that's just about gonna be ready for some grazing um but we're gonna ride and check check fences and i guess these next three pastures probably turn those calves out of there in just the next couple of days but leave them in here where one i know these fences are good it's a little smaller pasture keep a little closer eye on them um, until we get them out in a little bigger area all right so this could get interesting here where our culvert is out let's see if we can get this fella to jump and if i can stay on much better and easier than i thought it might be i guess it's always kind of a debate amongst uh cattlemen or cowboys as some people will call themselves about whether or not it's better to use a horse you know for for handling cattle and, and gathering them and you know, checking fences whatnot like we're doing versus using an atv and reality is we, we usually use an ATV more often than we do a horse, but 
All right, there's a prime example of one benefit um, the horse has, is we can't cross that ditch really on anything other than foot or horseback, but um, there wasn't no thing for Ace. So far, the fences are looking good, but I came on something kind of makes you chuckle. It's one of these times where you really hope you have um, good, honest neighbors, because you see a tree stand right there, um, no doubt for a deer hunter, overlooking a field of theirs there. But there's the fence. You know, the tree's about 12 feet off the fence. Stand there. Then you see there behind me. They definitely have a pretty good view of some of our pasture over here. So um, certainly it's one of these times where you got to just trust trust that they're, they're honest and wouldn't wouldn't be tempted to shoot one over here. But it's always interesting, you know, when they find stands right on the property line. But I don't know. They're not doing anything illegal. So, and I really don't know the neighbors if they're hunting themselves, if they're letting somebody hunt it. But again, just hope you can trust them in a situation like this. All right, and just looking, these pastures really starting to come on strong. A lot of clover and grass mix in there. Um, we're on that hillside into the next pasture. So, really, my favorite time of year. We finally got some green grass coming up. Anybody who's who's watched our channel, watched many of our previous videos, know I'm kind of a, a grass or grazing forage nerd. It's, uh, you know, I always say we're, we're grass farmers, not ranchers, not cattlemen, I'm certainly not cowboys. Um, you know, but that right there is our crop. We're simply using those calves as a means to harvest it and turn it into something that's marketable. Um, turn it into pounds of beef. So. These pastures are really gonna be ready to graze just any time now. Um, so, yeah, getting excited. Um, turning a little sunshine, water, and soil into beef. That's what it's all about. All right, so I found our first real bad spot on the fence. Ace is getting a little restless here. Yeah, snag or dead top fell out of this tree here got it um looks like it broke top four wires but won't be too bad of a spot to fix um all right ace let's go um and thankfully that's in kind of the second or middle pasture you know from either end of this farm you can come at it so oh thick brush there we can uh still gotta ride through one line on that first pasture but they can certainly, um, you know, got some grazing if it takes us, you know, a few days to get back here and fix that. But definitely a spot we've got to fix before we let them into this one. But if that's the worst spot we find, we're going to be in pretty good shape. All right, so there's the calves, still where they should be. And of course, now we're nearly back to the truck. So, yeah, one spot on the fence to fix, really all, a couple of other spots where there's a wire broken um, that, that we will address as well, but nothing major, nothing where they should be able to get out. Um, grass is looking great. Um, we'll have those turned out in here. Again, probably just in the next few days. Um, also, in the next few days, again, we're gonna be buying some more calves. Um, definitely wanna get some bought tomorrow as our plan, or, or, or at least in this next week. Then I'm gonna get my brother some calves bought as well that we'll also bring, um, use our, our my working facilities. And, and uh, you know, so lots going on, busy time of year for us, but that'll probably about wrap it up for this video. We appreciate you watching, um, for those of you who are still are. And uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, we really appreciate that, of course. Give it a thumbs up, share it. And as always, we remind you to eat beef and God bless.